Good evening. I'm Coach Lance Meyer of Grass Ministries and our Mission Advancer here at Chaplains and Schools. I have the privilege tonight of sharing with you the message in our Lent series week four entitled, He Willingly Suffered Himself for Us. We begin in the name of the living God, the triune God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We'll continue with our prayer for the tonight. Father God, may you open our hearts to your word, and as you did on the cross, may we willingly surrender ourselves to you. Forgive us the many times we seek our own selfish desires and pleasures, reject your word, and ultimately reject you. Give us the strength, wisdom, and a loving heart to surrender ourselves to your will. And finally, give us the confidence to boldly share this wonderful news with others. Amen. Our first reading is taken from Isaiah chapter 53, verses 7 to 9. He was oppressed and afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before its shears is silent, so he remained quiet. By oppression and judgment he was taken away. Yet who of this generation protested? For he was cut off from the land of the living. For the transgressions of my people, he was punished. He was assigned a grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death. Though he had done no violence, nor was any deceit in his mouth. This is the word of the Lord. We'll continue with the singing of I Give Myself Away by William McDowell. Our message tonight uh, for our sermon is taken from Matthew 26, verses 47 to 56. While he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived. With him was a large crowd armed with swords and clubs sent from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now the betrayer had arranged a signal with them. The one I kiss is the man. Arrest him. Going at once to Jesus, Judas said, Greetings, Rabbi. And he kissed him. 
Jesus replied, do what you came for, friend. Then the men stepped forward, seized Jesus, and arrested him. With that, one of Jesus' companions reached for his sword, drew it out, and struck the servant of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Put your sword back in its place, Jesus said to him, for all who draw the sword will die by the sword. Do you think I cannot by my father call upon him, and he will not at once put at my disposal more than twelve legions of angels? But how then would the scriptures be fulfilled that say, it must happen this way? In that hour, Jesus said to the crowd, Am I leading a rebellion, that you have come out with swords and clubs to capture me? Every day I sat in the temple courts teaching, and you did not arrest me. But this has all taken place, that the writings of the prophets might be fulfilled. Then all the disciples deserted him and fled. Tonight, we're going to look at the prophecy of Isaiah chapter 53 and its fulfillment in Matthew 26. And finally, we will briefly discuss our response. I want you to think for a second as I read these words. You may want to close your eyes or just think about what these words, how they affect you, what comes to mind. Here they are. Oppressed, afflicted, slaughter, shearers, silent, oppression, judgment, taken away, protested, cut off, transgression, punished, assigned, grave, wicked, death, violence, and deceit. What comes to your mind as you hear those words? My friends, those words were recorded in Isaiah 53. And even not in context, as I just read them, they paint a picture of death, hurt, harm, danger. As you thought of them, what came to your heart? I know for me, those words of Isaiah chapter 53, verses 7 to 9, they paint a picture that hurts my heart. They are, however, written 700 years before they actually came true. The words describe the Messiah's death long before it takes place. The words of the prophecy, however, come true in Matthew 26 and in the other Gospels as well. In those Gospels, and especially Matthew 26, we see Jesus condemned as the worst of sinners. And yet, we see Jesus remain silent. My friends, it would be incredible if Jesus went to the cross by force, if he was made to take that kind of pain. And yet, we know that Jesus had the power as true God to destroy those who were harming him to come down from the cross, to call on angels, to call on his Father for help. And yet he chose to remain silent. Jesus had the power to resist, but willingly obeyed his Father at his own detriment. This has huge implications. Jesus' death and resurrection transfers our sin to him and His righteousness comes to each of us. So what? What's this got to do with us? Why should we take time learning these words? The world teaches that we must do, that we have to do this or that, or not do this or that, in order to be right with God. But the Bible, God's true inspired word, tells us a different story. It teaches that Christ suffered and paid for our sins 100%. It is truly finished. 
This good news then empowers us to go forward with a life of thanksgiving. Not because we have to, but because we want to thank God for what he's already done. And when we fall, Jesus' blood reminds us of his forgiveness. My friends, may we today have the strength, the wisdom, and the fortitude to live our lives for him. This is God's word. Amen. We'll close tonight with the closing benediction. May the God of peace fill your hearts. May his face shine on you. And may his blessings be upon you. Amen. Thank you for worshiping tonight. Uh, just a reminder also that the Community of Faithful is live streamed and shown on YouTube every Sunday at 11 a.m. at Hope Fidelis in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. We would love to have you for worship or else you can stream or watch on YouTube. Reminder also that Christ for Disciples podcast is also available every Monday through Friday. I'm Coach Lance Meyer of Grass Ministries and our mission advancer here at Chaplains and Schools. May God richly bless your evening.